hello my name is yeti and if this is your first time on my channel welcome and if you've been on this channel before thanks for coming back i'll be talking about what the immigration officers do during the processing of your express entry application the timelines for different aspects of your application costs for the express entry program and how you can make changes to your express entry application if required i'll also talk a little bit about the police certificate the background checks and the medical reports you're going to need and as a bonus i'll be talking about things you can do to improve your chances of being approved even if your application was denied previously so make sure you watch to the very end i'm more than happy to answer your questions in the comment section but i also need to let you know i'm not an immigration consultant by any way but the information i share with you is based on my experience when i did my own application and also the research i've made and also just experience of those around me so please note this video is the concluding part of a video i made earlier on how you can immigrate to canada if you have zero knowledge of the process the link to that video is shown on the screen right now. So without taking any more of your time, let's dive right in. I'm going to start with the points to note for the work reference letter you're going to be needing for the express entry process. You want to make sure that from day one, when you start this process, you start actually collecting your documents so you don't start running around, especially like um, the reference letters, for example. You need to make sure that the um, what is there's a format to you. So you need to make sure that the letter they are giving you from your work actually tallies with the job duties you have in the NOC. Because if it doesn't tally, then it's a problem. Then it will look like you're not actually qualified or experienced in that job or that role you are claiming. So you need to make sure you have this. You need to make sure that your your company or the place you are working would actually issue you that letter. Because I've actually met people where the company they are working at did not even want to issue them this letter. Because, I mean, it means you are going to be leaving them, you are immigrating somewhere else. So they were not even ready to issue this letter. So you want to make sure that you start looking ahead to how you are going to make um, get this um, document collected when the time comes. Once you have uploaded all the documents and you have filled all the forms, the system will automatically generate the amount you pay to tell you uh, what you need to pay and all that. So the fees normally would include processing fees for yourself, your family members, that's all the family members you've included. Uh, usually for the kids, it's different, it's way lower than for the adults, so it will include all these uh, uh, fees for you. Uh, so one of the fees will be your right of permanent residence. But you can choose to pay this later. But my sincere advice, just pay everything now. If they don't give you right of permanent residence later, they will refund your money. Because you don't want, uh, because you didn't pay something, is why they will be delaying your application much later. Because I did, I made a mistake. I paid only for processing fee. I didn't pay for right of permanent residence. But I had to pay later. So, and it kind of slowed me down a bit. So you want to make sure you pay. But after you submit your application, if anything changes, because... Anything can change. You can get married or you could have another kid or something might happen. And you want to up update your application. There's actually a web form that you can actually fill to make these changes and all. If you don't update it, for example, if you just had a baby, you might not be able to bring the baby. God forbid. So please, update, 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 update. <laughs> Once all this is done and you've uploaded your documents, you've made the payments and all that, You've done any changes you need to do if you have to um they will send you what is called acknowledgement of receipt uh I, I, IRCC is the one that will send you that one uh, acknowledgement of receipt which is usually called aor lots of short forms in this state so you need to get used to the lingo so they will, they will then as soon as they get that they've acknowledged your receipt the next thing they'll start doing is start reviewing your application and once they review your application and everything is okay, is when they um, stamp your passport. But right now, let's look at the application review and the processing. So this part is really crucial. Is is um, I would say it's, for me is the most crucial part because this this is the waiting game. Like you're you're really tensed in this part because you don't know what can come. They can still deny you at this point, and I pray that doesn't happen. So this part is crucial. This is where if you've messed up before in your document submission, you didn't scan good copies or you didn't, you were dishonest, this is the time they can actually catch you. And like I said, if they actually catch you that you were dishonest or you didn't, you didn't, or let's say you didn't even just fill your form correctly, 
or you missed some parts that you did not fill or something, they can actually refuse your application. And imagine after all the things you've done, you've been in the pool, then they refuse your application. It's So you want to make sure that all the other steps I've mentioned before, you do them perfectly so that you don't have all this refusal. Then if they find out you're dishonest, you've lied somewhere in your form, they can actually bar you from coming to Canada or applying for anything, not just this immigration, even for vis uh, uh, visiting for five years, you won't be able to apply, you won't be able to do anything. So you want to make sure that you don't make uh, this kind of mistake. And usually from the time they receive your application, not uh, when you are doing your own, when they receive your application till the end of when you, you get your stuff, usually takes them about six months, one to six months. But in my own case, it took me about, I think three and a half months or so. So you might be lucky, it could take less and it could take more. Sometimes it takes more than six months. So if you've um, filled out your application correctly and truthfully and you've paid your processing fees, you've met all your all their requirements, you've included all the documents they asked you to uh, include, it shouldn't take uh, much time. You, uh, unless there's something really happening, it shouldn't take much time. And you can actually check uh, their site for what the processing time will be as at the time you submitted your application. So uh, this is also on the IRCC website. Really, anything you're looking for is on that website, so you can actually check it. So, they will check whether you are eligible. If you meet the eligibility criteria I told you uh, about the other time, uh, this is when they will check if you actually are eligible to have applied. They will check your medical exam report because they want to know that you are not going to come here and all they will be doing is footing your medical bill. So, they accept, they accept some medical issues, but not all. Um, police certificate also, they will also do background check for you. They want to make sure you know that you have not just committed any crime in your country, you've not committed um, elsewhere as well. So your police certificate would actually be for every country you've lived in for more than three months, I believe in the past 10 years. So it's not just your present country. It's going to be the country where you've lived in in the past 10 years, more than three months. So if you went for vacation somewhere and you lived there for only three weeks, you don't have to get police certificate from them. So all these checks they are doing is to make sure that you're admissible to Canada and that you've not committed crimes somewhere or war crimes or anything like that. Uh, they'll check it. You can also check their website for things that will make you inadmissible to Canada. It's also on their website. You can go over and check it on the IRFCC website. But on your profile that you've created before, they'll keep updating you on the status of your account. They'll keep telling you what they are doing presently, is your uh, uh what the status of your application is are they still looking at it what they are presently doing they'll keep telling you then uh they'll tell you to go and give your biometrics what they are doing is they'll tell you to go and give your biometrics that's your picture they'll capture you and your fingerprint this is usually if you are between 14 and 79 years old if you are not within this range they won't ask you to do it uh you have 30 days to do it so make sure you do it within the uh, time they've told you to and if necessary, if there's something they don't understand in your document or they need some explanation, they will ask you for more documents. Hopefully, you meet somebody who is really relaxed and not so high up there and just cancel all the whole application. So they'll ask you for more uh, information if they need to. And once they are actually sure of all the documents, they've seen all they want to see, they think everything is good, the next thing they'll do is um, your visa approval, your application approval, and your visa stamping. So you'll be sent an email also you'll be sent an email to your regular email and also through your profile that they've approved you they'll confirm your they'll confirm your approval and this is like the most wonderful news you get i'm telling you uh, it, it feels like it feels different i can tell you for for sure so make sure that as soon as you get this message from them saying that they've confirmed uh your application for permanent residency that you pay your right of permanent residence fee you know that fee that i told you that so people choose not to pay sometimes make sure as soon as they send you this thing go and make that payment because this is the thing that will actually delay them sending you confirmation of permanent residence this is what is called copr so uh the copr will have information about who you are then also there will be your face will be there like your the passport photograph the digital passport you submitted earlier They'll put it there for you and you'll have other information as well. So this COPR usually will tell you um, when you can come in. There will, there, will, there will be a lot of information on it anyway, but just make sure that the information is correct. They've not misspelled your name or anything because 
if your name is misspelled and it's not same as what is on your passport and your other document, they might not allow you to enter Canada later and you might actually have some issues. So make sure that the information tallies. If it doesn't tally, make sure you're contacting them through your account as well so they know and they can make um, these corrections. So usually uh, the COPR will extend till the end of your medicals. The medical exam you did, the COPR will extend till the end of that medical. So you want to make sure that um, you come or you land in Canada within that time because it expires. And if it expires, they don't like they don't give you more time to to come. I'm sure there's a way you can do it, but they really don't give you more time uh, to come within that. Maybe you have to do a separate application, but usually they won't extend your COPR. So uh, for the COPR, you have 30 days to submit. Once they give you your COPR, you have 30 days to submit your passport to the visa office in your country. So uh, I know there's um, VFS in most places in the world. In Nigeria, there's VFS too. I'll probably put their link in the description box so you can actually go there. So the VFS is where you can actually, um, do you actually give your passport to them, they'll get your visa and all that. But note that you need to find the location that is nearest to you in your country that you can go. And you can check this on their website. Uh, their location, you can book your appointment there as well. You can also find out the fees they will collect because uh, at this visa office, this VFS office, they actually charge you. It's not free. So you have to find out what the fees is uh, about. You take along the letter, that COPR letter that you were issued. You will take it along with your international passport and your digital passport. Uh, but the good thing about this VFS thing is within two weeks, they would actually send back Within two weeks of you giving them your uh, passport, they would actually send you back your document. So you would have everything within two weeks, which is great. I remember when I got mine, I literally, <laughs> literally left the office in the middle of work and ran down to get, um, ran down to get my, my um, passport back from the courier office. It was DHL that time in Abel, but I actually ran back to get it. So, but what you need to understand is that that COPR that you're going to, the visa that you're, they are going to give you, is only going to be valid till the end of your medicals as well. So it's not going to last forever. So within that time, you need to make sure you land in Canada. So when you come to Canada, then you'll get your permanent resident card and you will no longer need that particular visa because that visa is only a one-time visa. You can't use it. It's not multiple entry visa. You can only use it one time. So if your application is uh, rejected or is refused for some reason, uh, what I want you to know is that you can still be considered in the future for other rounds of inter uh, invitations. It's not as if uh, once they reject you, then it's rejection forever. No. You can actually even go back into the pool to uh, express another interest that you want to you want to submit another express entry profile. You can do that. Uh, you can also uh, try to meet the eligibility criteria. And the way you can do that is by uh, doing some things. One, you can actually apply for jobs. But more importantly, before I even go into that, there is um, the website, there's a there's a place on Canada um, government website where you can actually find what the, the historical, like what the scores have been, in, let's say in the past few months or in the past few years, what the recent, recent, what the recent score is. So you can check, okay, compared to my score right now, what is the score they've been getting? Are they been choosing 456 and my score is actually 410? So then you can decide on how to improve your score. And one of the ways to improve your score is actually, like I said, by searching for a job in Canada. You can do this by applying to all these job boards. We have Indeed, there's LinkedIn. There's a whole lot of other job boards in Canada that you can apply to. Uh, there are also Facebook um, groups. I've actually come across um, quite a number of them that actually advertise jobs for international applicants. You can search them on Facebook. Join this group. You can never tell when you'll put something out there that would actually match your experience or your skill. So you can look for a job in this way. You can also take French. Uh, like I said earlier, if you're English speaking and you are able to communicate in French at least, there's a possibility you get between 25 and 50 points additional in your express entry pool. But what I want to say is don't just sit in the pool. If you have tried all these things and your score is still low, Try and apply 
through the provincial nom uh, nominee program. And you can do this by actually um, showing expression of interest. You do this by actually applying to through what is called expression of interest. And if um, any of the provinces nominate you, you get additional 600 points. So imagine if you have just 300 and a province nominates you. So instantly you're getting 900. So tell me which, which cut off they'll choose that they will not pick you. 900 out of 1,200. They'll pick you. So if you found anything I've talked about today useful, make sure you please like this video. Make sure you like the video and subscribe. Don't forget to click that red subscribe button below. Hit on the notification bell, the bell beside it. Hit on the notification bell so that you can get notified anytime I have new videos. And if you have friends who are also interested in this process or in this program, make sure you're sharing this video to them. You never know what this video is going to help. So thank you so much for watching this video. If this is your first time yet, thank you so much for watching. And if you've been on my channel and you've been rooting for me, I just want to say I love you. Thank you so much and see you next time.